Greetings, and welcome to another edition of Seamless Style, powered by Politics and Polaroids. I'm your host, Mr. Parker. So for this particular episode, I want to feature and highlight one of our favorite sweaters. Well, I'll only speak for myself this time. One of my favorite sweater styles, and that would be Farrah. I have quite a few Farrell sweaters, not sure exactly how many, I think maybe at least 20, um, but I love the Farrell sweater. Uh, I'll talk about later the history of the Farrell sweater, but for right now, I simply just want to say that it's one of the most, but believe it or not, because it is a, I would say maybe, type, maybe a flashy, maybe even considered a flamboyant style sweater. Um, kind of like how a Kuji sweater would be classified. Even though it is that type of sweater, when 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 attired properly, it's uh it's no different than any other beautiful piece of artwork. Um, most more often than not, a fair house sweater needs to be toned down by everything else, just so there can be an even balance. But once that's done. Like I said, the Fair Isle is one of the greatest sweaters out. This particular ensemble I'm wearing, I went with my uh, Ralph Lauren Polo uh, wool suit. It's actually a three-piece suit, so obviously I'm not wearing the vest, but I am wearing the sports coat and the matching slim fit trousers. It's a heavy wool. This is my favorite suit in my entire collection of suits. Um, tan, herringbone pattern. Like I said, very heavy, uh, fall, winter staple. I took away the vest and added this particular uh, Farrell sweater vest. Now, to some of you all, this particular Farrell sweater vest may look familiar. We'll get into that also later during this episode. Cream based with some greens, oranges, light blues, royal blues, uh, some garnet definitely in here. So I, I wanted to bring out the garnet more. So I went with a garnet heraldic necktie and I, I like the chambray idea with these uh, fair eye sweaters, but I wanted to go a little bit darker. So I went with the denim, the denim uh, button down sports shirt. So like I said, very, very appealing, very nice uh, sweater is the swear, uh, fair eye sweater. And again, we'll go into more details as the uh, episode progresses. But for right now, I want to show you three different styles of fair isle sweaters outside of this vest that I did do some styling on on the rigs for you. Um, the, the vest is the primary concern for the ensemble, so I'm not gonna do a voiceover. I'm gonna, you know, do a little more traditional and uh, talk throughout the, the vlog. So, if you gentlemen and ladies are ready, cause I'm ready. Now let's go. This particular fair isle sweater, long sleeve of course, not a vest, but this gentleman is a crew neck. That honestly was the only reason I bought this sweater about maybe four years ago. Now obviously of course it, it's, it's got gray, gray tones and gray hues throughout. That attracted me. But what made me go ahead and purchase it really was the fact that it was a crew neck. You only, you usually only see fair isle sweaters in a V-neck. More often than not, if you if you see a hundred fair isle sweaters, you probably ninety five of them are probably V-necks. Ninety seven of them are probably V-necks. But I wanted to stick with the the theme of this particular fair isle sweater. Every pattern and design in this fair isle sweater is some hue of gray. Uh, anywhere from a gunmetal to a light gray to a dark gray. There is a little bit of white in a pattern up here and here and a little further down. But the actual theme, overall theme is definitely hues of gray. So I wanted to stick with that, uh, that theme and I went with the gray window pane slacks here, light gray, slim fit. I went with a gray estate collar soft cotton dress shirt all right 
it's in a, I would say a medium gray hue. It's in a medium gray, almost a college gray hue. Uh, I did polish it off with a Ralph Lauren necktie, purple label necktie. Uh, it's navy blue and actually a very light gray. I originally thought that this tie was white when I purchased it from the website. Not looking at, I just, I just needed the blue. I needed the blue and it was rep stripe, so that was a plus, but it's gray. So I'm like, that's perfect. Once it came, once I got it, I was like, oh, I like this. And then it ended up being perfect for this ensemble. Topped it off with the, uh, is this rugby? Yeah, rugby tam and a soft gray to finish off the monochromatic look. If it's uh, 40, 30 degrees outside, you grab, uh, I got a couple of, I got a couple of duffel coats, three quarter length coats that are all, all of a gray hue. So to finish off the look, I throw that on. And then in this particular case, you can do brown. I'd probably do a black dress shirt, dress shoe. I'd probably go ahead and do a black just to stick with uh, the particular theme up here. Cause some of these grays are really dark, like this gunmetal. But again, like I said, you definitely could do a brown. If you did a brown, I would probably do, I'd probably do a medium to a dark brown. I probably wouldn't go too light. I probably wouldn't go with a tan. I'd probably do a medium to a dark brown if I did to do brown. But me, I'd probably do black. Um, but yeah, this, this particular sweater, like I said, the only one I've seen that I recall in a crew neck. So this is uh this is a, a good piece for my collection. And uh if you could definitely if you can find a fair isle sweater in a crew neck, I would say if the size and price is right, jump on it because you don't again, like I said, you don't see that too often. All right, let's go to the next read. This particular Farrell sweater here, same as the previous sweater in the sense of it's not a V-neck, it's an actual turtleneck. Yes, this is one piece, this is one sweater. I don't have a crew neck with a turtleneck, this is one piece. Again, rare. I don't see Farrell sweaters with the, uh, that's, a, that's a turtleneck. So, it was a no brainer for me to jump on it. And also when I bought it, I was uh, still employed at a factory location where the dress code was primary Navy. So it worked well for work also. But yeah, this is a beautiful piece here, man. Like I said, Navy based. It's got some garnet in it. It's got this little, this medium, this medium purple hue on this particular pattern is pretty cool. It's, it goes through here three times on the front. Uh, Again, navy base, tan, light blue, slate blue. It's got a, uh, this is a pewter. It's got a pewter design. Man, this is this is an awesome, a awesome Farrell sweater. So what I did here is I paired it with the camel, camel haired, green camel haired sports coat. You know, that's also a rare piece. Wooden buttons. Great, great, uh, great piece of artwork here. I paired it with, uh, the camel hair, the camel hair coat. I did a garnet pocket square, and then I did the uh, Gurkha hued slim fit corduroys. Small well, nothing too fancy because this is the standout piece. You just want everything else to tone it down. But yeah, this is a pretty, pretty cool ensemble for you know maybe you're maybe you're out out and about around town and it's you know it's snowy weather or maybe you're on vacation in the alps or something like that this is a pretty good piece to have for you know uh relaxing sitting back you you're in the swiss alps maybe you're not skiing this particular day but you know you want to sit in the in the lodge and drink your little cocoa or you're going out to dinner with your significant other this is a nice piece just to show hey it's winter but i'm still stylish i'm still in there now shoe wise again weather weather does make a difference if it's just a, a situation where it's cold outside, but you're out and about, uh, you you know you could do a nice pair of brogues or something. I would definitely go brown and hue. However, you may want to do a boot. You could do a Chelsea boot. Um, I would do a brogue boot. I, I just like brogues with the fair eye. That's just me. But you could do a Chelsea boot. You could do a, a, a chucker. It just depends, but a nice boot rolled up uh, right above your, your boot top. I wouldn't tuck it in. You don't have to tuck the boot in or anything like that, 
But um, yeah, just a nice little a nice little dress boot will work wonders with this. And then you know if you do need some headgear, there are different um different driving caps you could go with different estate driving caps, cabbies or tams. You could also do a, a solid ribbed uh, scut, or as we say in the south of Tobago. But yeah, it, you know, like I said, nice look here. Definitely uh, for layering season, keep you warm. You rocking the road. All right, let's go to, uh, I got one more, one more rig, all right, let's do that. Okay, so remember I told you at the top of this episode that the original Farrell sweater vest that I had on in the, in the, in the introduction uh, was something that you guys had probably seen before. Well, here's its big brother. So, I don't know if you guys remember this being online a year ago, but basically, uh, that fair out sweater vest that I was wearing earlier is this before the embroidery. Rouse Tigers, Giant Tiger Head. There is also a lining, which is similar to this sports shirt that I'm wearing inside of this sweater vest that's not in the other one. But basically what happens is, is this is uh, manufactured. If it doesn't uh, meet its quota, make, makes the sales, if it doesn't sell out, then it trickles down to the factory and outlet stores. Now, a lot, oftentimes they'll change things up. So you may have seen, like for example, uh, there's a CP93 uh, track jacket. I've worn it on a previous episode. That particular jacket, once the capsule release, sold out, remanufactured, had some pieces left, then, you know, you maybe change a few logos up and you trickle it down to the factory outlets. That particular track jacket, they took CP93 off and replaced it with the word polo. Fast forward, this particular Farrell sweater vest, you take your embroidery off, you trickle these, the, uh, what's left, the cream Farrell sweater vest down to your factory and outlet locations. So uh, I went to the store where I used to work. I saw it on clearance. I bought it. I'm in line thinking to myself, it seems like I have this sweater vest already. Well, hey, you see, I'm in the system. I need to bring it back for a return or exchange, which like I, I rarely, I rarely return or exchange anything. Once I buy it, I'm usually, because I know the brand, I know fits. If I don't, if I do have a problem, I will try something on. Usually I never have to return anything. Um, once I got it home and put it with the rest of the fair out, then that's when I noticed, ah, I do have it. So my, my thinking is, okay, I'm gonna have to take it back. But then I looked a little closer and realized, hmm, that's my Ralph Tiger's uh, fair out vest. I was like, I'll keep them both. This one I can wear exclusively with this particular varsity jacket and the other one you know i can i have a little more leeway because it's it's not it's not made exclusive with the embroideries so there you go that's why you may have seen felt like you've seen that one before it's not a i don't i don't particularly feel like that hue of cream with these colors in the Farrell pattern is common now hues of tan and brown in a fair uh, sweater that is common but you know the patterns are intri intricate you definitely have to uh take into account because i have i have maybe six or seven sweaters that are, are are of a tan hue and maybe three or four of them are vests but they all have different patterns the the actual base tan may be may be lighter or darker just depending that cream one that's almost cream one is the lightest one i have now, Farrell. To me, for me, this is why I love Farrell so much. When you when you delve into the history of it, it's kind of like, okay, no wonder I'm so enamored with the Farrell. So a Farrell sweater or a Farrell pattern uh, was derived on the island of Farrell, which is in between one uh, island I can't pronounce, and Shetland. Shetland wool, one of our favorite wool sweaters. All right, 
uh, in a uh, in in a part of Scotland in the UK. So, uh, hand knit. The the patterns are intricate. Uh, the women that that, that that did the particular that do the particular knitting of the pattern, they each do one pattern. So each pattern actually symbolizes something for that particular uh, artist that's that's making the pattern. Okay, that's the first thing. Just the, just the matter of the, the matter of fact that the the patterns mean something. That's the first beauty of this piece of artwork. Also, um, no one is exactly sure of when it started, but a lot of people tend to to uh, pin it on the Vikings. Once the Vikings settled in that area, that's where that pattern began. Come on, man, you can't. I mean, granted, no no one likes the Minnesota Vikings, but come on. Vikings, everybody loves Vikings. So that's another reason. Those Norwegians, man, they they it's it's just something about them that that, that manliness of them. The the Vikings, Norwegians, Norwegian warriors, things of that nature, they just the well-renowned men. You know what I mean? Men of men. Also, uh, you know, for those that might wanna get particular and picky about things. Unless you come from that area, I, you can shut your you can shut your fucking mouth. If you come from that area, I respect I respect your thought process. This that being said, no fair out sweater, whether it's Ralph Lauren or any other brand, no fair out sweater is a truly authentic fair isle fair isle sweater. And what I mean by that is, is that to this day, 2020. In 2020, if you want an original, authentic Fair Isle sweater, you would have to go to the island of Fair Isle and have one made, or or order, or or buy one that's already made, um, or or order. You can order one online and have it shipped. I mean, we're talking 2020 here, but it would have to have that Fair Isle trademark star on it. So Ralph, in particular, came pretty close. But I was looking through a couple of my sweaters. I think maybe it could be a copyright thing. It could be just out of respect. But I didn't find that particular five star uh, Fair Isle star on any of the, uh, the few sweaters I looked. But it's pretty close to this pattern here. But yeah, it's just, it's an intricate process of knitting that to have a true Fair Isle sweater vest, it has to come from the island of Fair Isle. It has to be a manufactured and produced on the island of Fair Isle. Otherwise, to, in some people's eyes, it's not authentic. Okay, I get it. Like I said, I respect it from the people of that particular culture and that area and that and and, and that geography. But otherwise, I don't. I don't want to hear that shit, man. This is a Fair Isle. This is a Fair Isle. Boom. That being said, this last joint seemed like I've discussed this before on my platform, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to do it again. Now, this particular Fair Isle sweater vest is from Purple Label. I've had this about four, four years, maybe five. When it originally hit the website, it was a sweater vest. So when I saw it, I was like, oh wait, it's perfect. Perfect because I, I almost figured it to be a lighter weight than what it is. So it was cool that it was a little bit heavier than what it was, but I thought it was gonna be a little lighter weight. But it was also cool because even though brighter colors are a theme for fair eye patterns, the way I looked at it with this uh, magenta and this uh, purple here and this, this particular shade of blue, I felt like, man, this, this sweater vest, I probably can get away with wearing it up through late spring transition into wear, wearing it with uh, a long sleeve, lightweight button up shirt, roll my sleeves up, pair of shorts, shoes, no socks. I was gonna be in the house. Plus it's purple label. I knew I wasn't gonna see it everywhere because you know, rightfully so, a lot of people just don't wanna stand that purple label money and I get it. So I ordered it, received it, opened it up, long sleeve sweater. To be honest, I was pissed. I was pissed, but only because the sweater is beautiful. Long sleeve was short. 
But the only reason I was pissed off was because, like I said, I had plans to be able to wear it longer than just fall and in and, and, and through winter. I felt like I could get it get away with it in spring as well. Now, summer, I wouldn't wear a sweater vest, but I mean, I had three of the four, three of the four seasons of the year covered with, with this being a vest. Um, what the company ended up doing for me, and I and I and I was uh, employed with the company at the time, but what they ended up doing for me, I think they, I don't know, they gave me some kind of money back. I can't remember what it was, but it was something that I just was like, okay, whatever. I, like I wanted the vest. The vest was not going to be manufactured, so they had the wrong picture on the website. Picture and description was all wrong. The same sweater, but this particular sweater had sleeves and it wasn't supposed to. That being said, it's a beautiful piece of artwork. It's gorgeous. Um, it's slightly different from a lot of your fair eye sweaters where when you look at it, you get the idea that this is your primary pattern, which it is, but also it feels like this is your base. The base is actually the, the uh, this sand here, this dark sand. Um, but you don't see a lot of, you got it here in a smaller scale, but you don't see a lot of blocked off fair eye patterns like this. Nonetheless, it's, it's a beautiful piece of artwork. Uh, it doesn't have a plethora of colors in it, but the colors that are in it are pretty, fu pretty fucking awesome. So I just paired it here with a white dress shirt, magenta and navy blue bow tie, and I did my dark gray window pane slim fit dress pants. I would end it off, I got a pair of, uh, I got a pair of wingtips I'll probably do with it. And they're uh, cognac colored. So I'll probably end it off with those. Nice pair of socks to complement the colors here. And we rocking and rolling. But yeah, this is uh, this 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 particular uh, sweater of mine, this particular fair house sweater of mine has a, a little history, a little backstory to it that's, uh, to be honest, still pretty frustrating. But you know, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, I'm happy with it. It's, an, it's a nice piece, all right? Let's wrap this up. Just got an espresso machine. So, just, uh, just a little espresso. Light, uh, light shot of cream. A little bit of extra sugar. Mm. Pretty good. So that's another episode in the books. We did the Fair Isle sweater today. Showed you three different rigs with three different styles of Fair Isle sweaters. One crew neck, one turtleneck, one V-neck sweater. But ended up giving you like six outfits because I couldn't choose as to what I wanted to wear. I could not choose, I could not narrow it down. And I didn't want to cheat y'all. So. You know, a little more work for me, switching clothes, whatever, but it was cool. Did the, um, did the cream swear out, mm, swear out, cream fair out sweater vest from the outlet. It was the little brother of the Ralph Tigers. Did that one first with a full wool suit. Came back with the Ralph Tigers version, the big brother. Threw it under the... Letterman's jacket, the green Letterman's jacket with the, with the uh, same tiger matching cap. And then come back with uh, one of my favorite finds. And not so much the sweater, although the sweater is amazing. Elbow patches, right? Yeah. Elbow patches. Beautiful. This, to me, this gives me more of a Norwegian vibe than any of the other ones I have. But beautiful fair eye pattern. The burnt orange, the brown, the tan, man, it just screams fall. So it's a beautiful sweater by Rugby, but what makes it one of my best finds is the, is the fact that not too long after I bought the sweater, and I, how about I found the Rugby tie online? Nice wool, thick wool tie, uh, lined on the inside. Rugby, of course, man, perfect, just you know, we, we steer clear of matchy matchy, but and I'm and, and I can I can only speak for African American brothers, black folk. 
we 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 come from matchy match. You know, we we buy the. I remember buying the uh, the first pair of J. Well, I had the ones and the twos, but I remember buying the first pair when he went to the Wizards. They came in the silver little Halliburton and buying the Wizards jerseys for me and my fir my firstborn and buying him the shoes and shorts that like just matched to a T. And that's, you know, that's been something that's been a part of our community. Uh, but as I, as I, as I evolved and matured and, and, and changed my dress code and started becoming uh, more into uh, casual and business casual and then becoming a Ralph Lauren guy, it's like, you know, you definitely matchy matchy is not what you want to do. But sometimes it works. And in this particular case, it works. Pair of jeans, pair of uh pair of chucker boots. I got on a pair of chucker boots in uh in in a, in uh, cognac. So yeah, you know. This is uh this is a piece here, man. It's just with this orange and this green in here, man. It's just yeah, this is Definitely one of my favorite finds once you're talking about putting it all together. And then just for something different, because I, I have so many cabbies, newsboys, driver caps, tams. I have so many caps like that. I just wanted to do something different through on the, the felt wool uh, fedora by Double RL. So anyway, get in the comment section. Let's talk about that fair isle. Um, I particularly want to hear from any gentlemen or ladies of gentlemen that they may be fashioning and styling. I particularly want to hear from you guys as far as uh, anybody who doesn't like a fair isle sweater. Um, if you don't like it and why, I really like to hear your reasoning. Not that I'm going to judge you because I don't. We don't do that here. Uh, not that I'm going to judge you or anything like that. I just, you know. I just want to hear like what's the what's the reason that somebody may not like a fair isle sweater it could be a, a particular intricate reason it could be just man i don't like how i look and either way it's totally acceptable for me just unfollow me and never speak to me again no, i'm kidding i'm kidding but seriously everybody's welcome to comment but in anybody in particular who does not like the fair isle sweater vest i'd like to hear from you. um also too uh I've been having a lot of people asking me about styling. Are you a stylist? Do you style men? Do you style women? Um, I'm starting to network a little bit more with stylists. In particular, um, there are a couple of female stylists that, I'm, um, that I've been having conversations with because I also do want to delve into women's fashion and style on, on the Ralph Lauren side as well. So, you know, just to, I just wanna have another bullet bullet to my gun the gun is men's style you know i'm a man i'm never gonna you know abandon that but you know just want to have a couple of extra bullets in the chamber you know what i mean but anyway um people been asking me about styling and being a stylist i have actually charged and done style work style consulting for people before um i am looking to get in, into it again so I'm going to try something probably on the next episode, but I'm just mentioning it to you now. I'm, I'm still brainstorming on it, trying to finalize the pieces of how I want to get it done. But I want to use my platform to get into styling people. Okay, so uh, just just stay tuned if you're interested. Next next episode, I'll be talking more about it. I have all my ducks in a row and I'll be willing to talk about it further. But I'm definitely about to get into styling um I'm not gonna I'm, I'm the type of person man I'm, I'm not looking to get rich off of somebody else especially in that type of field like we do this we're gonna do it you know what I mean just compensate me and you know like I said you'll know more about it next week but yeah you know it's gonna be something simple but it's gonna be something easy for me to do and it's gonna put whoever needs it in the right place where they need to be all right hit that like Hit that subscribe and tell a friend we here. And remember, artists paint pictures, haters paint narratives. So don't be no hater. All right? Have a good one.